Hey everybody, welcome back to Nib Pickin'. My name is Steven, I'm an artist and I love fountain pens. Uh, today I'm gonna be showing you a pen that I got recently um, as a Christmas present from my sister-in-law. Um, it is the Hongdian Black Forest. I've seen this pen on the internet. I've seen quite a few YouTube reviewers give it very favorable of your reviews. Um, and I'm curious how it would be as an art supply. So today we're gonna look at the parts of the pen. Um, we're gonna fill it up with some ink and I am going to play around with it and do a drawing sample for you guys. Stay tuned. All right, so this is approximately how the box comes. It's a very plain white box. Um, it says EF on the bottom. That's the really, get some focus there. That's really the only part that even indicates what's inside. Um, I pull it out and it says Hongdian. There's kind of a gold finish to it, a uh, little bit reflective and uh, plain on the back. And if I push the pen out, the box out, excuse me, we get the pen here. Um, it is in a little tray with a little ribbon to pull it out and another ribbon to keep it in place. It's a nice little box. It's, I mean, it's made of cardboard, not really built to last, but it comes with a warranty card. Um, and register within 10 days of purchase. Uh, for me, that's already um, expired. So I didn't really bother with that. There's a little thank you and an email for uh, customer satisfaction type stuff and in case you didn't know whoops in case you didn't know what a fountain pen is uh, here are the parts of a fountain pen a um, little bit of instruction on installing a converter installing a cartridge so if this is your first fountain pen eh, this this is nice information to have obviously most uh, people who've had a fountain pen before won't need this information, but they kept it brief. They didn't take up a lot of weight and space. You do get two converters with the pen. Um, they're nice. They don't appear to be standard international converters. Um, just once again, another company that's got their own kind of thing going. Um, however, a link on the Amazon um, listing for this pen does show that they work apparently with Jinhao converters or at least they recommend those uh, cartridges excuse me so I, I'm not sure it's a little bit confusing but anyway uh, here we have the pen let me move some of this stuff out of the way so we can see it uh, without all this extra stuff um, what we have here is it's a it's a metal like maybe an aluminum um, barrel. It feels a relatively light and smooth. It's got a knurled edge here, so you can see some of the texture. Hopefully, uh, with the light, you can see a little bit of that. Um, there's a little bit of a uh, it it the barrel moves in towards the end, and that's of course to fit the cap on there. The clip is pretty stiff; doesn't move a lot. Um, it'll clip onto a shirt pocket if you're into that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it doesn't move very much. This finial has, I'm not really quite sure what that symbol means, but it could be a Chinese symbol or just a design, like a logo kind of thing. But that's on the end there, sort of a plastic um, bubble shape on the top. All right, opening up the pen, here we have the nib. Uh, I find this nib is, it seems very small. The barrel is very narrow. I'm not sure if that's gonna be comfortable or not. Um, some nice little stamping here on the edges with that logo that was on the finial is in the center of the uh, logo there, of, of, the, of the nib there. It says EF underneath. Um, Hongdian also does sell a few uh, replacement nibs. So if you feel like it, you could get um, a, a fine, an extra fine. And there's also a bent or fude type nib. Um, I put in an order for a few of those, so I might uh, show this pen again with some of those other ones. But um, anyway, you open up the cap, the barrel. It's pretty much that right there. 
Um, here's the converter. The converter looks nice. Like it made made of some solid material. It's a little spring shaped thing to break up the ink uh, to keep it from uh, getting an air bubble stuck by the feed, which is nice. Just a regular twist style piston converter, but it does feel like it's made of some solid material. So I like that. Here's the section, and this is a twist off nib section. There's some a rubber gasket on the top here. I'm assuming that's to keep it sealed nice and strong. And uh, that part is what you would replace if you got a replacement one. So there's the parts. Um, I do actually want to show you something I noticed about this uh, when you put the whole thing together is that posting the cap on this is a little bit weird. Like it goes on, but it doesn't feel like it goes on all the way. At first I thought that was as deep as it went, just like that, which is really weird and uncomfortable to hold, but pushing it in all the way, it does go in all the way. It feels like it shouldn't. It feels like you're gonna break it. So this is what it's like posted. It feels a little back heavy. Um, so I, I think I would enjoy this more um, unposted. If your hands are any bigger than mine, maybe that could be an issue. But um, I don't know, we'll see what's more comfortable when I start drawing with it. Today's ink comes from the Colorverse Mini Collection. This is Conjecture. Um, really cool packaging on these. These come from South Korea. Uh, they give you a little pipette uh, as a lot of uh, the pens that you would get that this ink comes in. It's such a tiny bottle. I doubt there's even a pen that will go into this all the way. So um, eyedrop ring it or filling up the cartridge directly is the way you got to go with these. Um, Colorverse is kind of a more expensive brand. So to be able to get three different colors from them for about $20 is a really cool deal. I'm going to try because this is a pretty narrow barrel. I'm going to see if it'll go in. Uh, just barely it does not so i'm gonna fill from the uh converter directly and this worked with another pen that i tried with these inks as well so whoop. i'm gonna draw the i'm gonna draw the uh plunger down into the ink it's very full um i'm not going to probably get a, a 100 percent full fill from this, but that's fine because I, I actually like filling my pens, so I don't mind if there's a little bit of an air bubble. All right, there we go. That's filled up. Um, let's pop it onto the feed and we're ready for some art. Okay, so here we are. I've decided to go with unposted uh, I feel like that's comfortable it's long enough here and I don't know the the cap does add a little bit of back weighting to it uh, gonna try something new here something I did in my last video or a few videos ago um, art advice just a, a something to get me started here I'm loving this uh, color verse conjecture. It's a nice color. Our advice. Get the values right before the final draft. This is something that I'm trying to be better at actually when you are drawing something and it's got too much darkness or there's too many lines that are obscuring where the dark and the light should be. It can get really bad so you got to go in with a plan when you want to do something um, and you can wing it when you get more skills but definitely at first something you want to be focused on something that I'm trying to focus on in this new year. Um, getting the values right, doing value studies, 
practicing and doing compositions before I get started. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this pen. It's an extra fine. So that feels like a fine to me, that line. And if I look at it, I'm going to try with more pressure. Digs into the paper, but doesn't get much thicker. So I wouldn't recommend putting a lot of heavy pressure. Very light pressure gets me that like that. Um, a side stroke is actually a little bit thinner. And the reverse writing, let's give this a go. Okay, we get very thin lines. It's clearly not meant to do that. If you go slowly, you can get a full complete line. But uh, faster is a lot of um, skipping there. So this is not a great pen for reverse writing. Uh, once more, I'm going to give you that. Whoops. Can't spell. Forward writing like that. And then here's reverse writing. Again, a little bit of skipping down towards the end, particularly on the side strokes. Um, wouldn't recommend this pen as a solid reverse writer, although there are lots of pens in the extra fine department that do pretty well with reverse writing. Um, but uh, yeah, that's not that's not what this pen is. Um, let's shade some shapes here. I'm gonna do a cylinder. I'll do it from a top view like that, and then a circular conical shape. And last but not least, let's do a half dome. All right, and when I'm doing these lines, I'm going to try and do them just kind of quick, sketchy lines, not trying to go into detail. We'll do that for the drawing sample. But yeah, you can get, with a nice light pressure and a little flick of your wrist, you can get some really thin, nice lines here, which uh, you're seeing on this half dome, and it looks, it looks good to me. So this is an exciting pen to be having. The knurling is pretty comfortable and the hand keeps it from slipping. I, I have kind of warm hands and so um, that's something I do think about. If a, if a pen is too slick, it'll slip around in my hands and it won't be comfortable to hold. I have to hold it tighter. That makes my um, wrist hurt, which means that I can't draw for as long as I want to. Big problem. But this is not that, so I'm not getting that from this. It's, it works very nice in the hand. Um, very good. So, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the way this pen handles. I think it it is on cheap paper right now, so we could see that it would do well with that. I think it would do well with more expensive paper, Clairefontaine or um, Tomoe River kind of stuff, um, or Bristol Illustration Board. Yeah, these, this is really comfortable to use. Um, I don't know, what else do you want? Do you want those like swirly lines? How do they do that, the swirly lines that they do? What are those for? Someone reviews pens from a writing perspective. Why do they do the swirly lines? I don't know. Here's some side strokes for you. Anyway, that's the pen, that's how it works. Let's do the drawing example. So I've been uh, trying to think what to say about this pen, uh, but I wanted to start off saying about the subject I ended up going back to. I shouldn't say back to because ironically, I actually filmed this video before the postcard video that I posted a couple weeks back. Um, the concept of my lonely astronaut. Um, but it's perfect timing for me just to kind of say uh, thank you to everyone for all the kind words of support and kind of the feedback and the reaction that I got from posting and talking about a deeply personal subject, the subject of uh, going through depression. And I think there's more I have to say on that subject and a lot of other subjects that relate to art, uh, to having confidence in yourself as an artist and, and other things. So. I really think I will uh, continue to explore those ideas and I love the idea that uh, my three postcards are going out to uh, three awesome people on my channel um, that uh, have been interacting and, and sharing uh, positive energy with me over the last couple of, of weeks and months that I've been doing this channel so that's exciting. Um, 
What to say about the Black Forest? I, I was trying to think of of a way to describe it and what it what it is. And I the word that I keep coming back to is that it's it's sort of like an archetype of a pen, like a type of pen that I think everyone should have something like this because it's it's super sturdy. Um, it produces a very consistent line. It's just sort of this metal, built like a tank kind of pen. Um, not a lot of problems with uh, startups, with skipping, with anything like that. Um, not a lot of variation in the nib, so you really do get kind of the same line over and over again. But that can be a very good thing. Um, and I really like playing around with this pen uh, and using it to create the artwork that I'm creating. So um, it's a very, it's a very satisfying experience. Um, let's see. I have also uh, noticed that I, I've gone back to this pen more and more as I've been using some of the other pens in my collection. So I think this is one that's going to be around for a long time for me. Um, something that I wouldn't want to get rid of or, or move out just because it's, it's such a reliable pen. Um, it is long enough unposted, which is how I prefer to use it because the posting mechanism is not perfect. But uh, for the price range that this pen is in, I feel like um, you know some of the things that weigh against it, like the fact that it's um, you know that it doesn't post well, uh, it still makes the pen quite worth it. So definitely check it out if you're interested. And I'm I'm gonna be uh, quiet for the rest of this video and just let you enjoy the drawing. See you in a little bit.
All right, so this Hongdian Black Forest pen was fun to use. We got a great drawing out of it. I'm very happy with how it performed. It's reliable, it feels really nice to hold, and um, yeah, I can recommend it. If you are interested in using this pen um, as an artist, I think it will do well for you. It's a reasonable price. Um, Hongdian also sells um, nibs that you can switch out and replace. Uh, I've ordered a few of those, so I might show you what some of those other nibs do. If uh, you're interested, leave a comment below in the video comment section. Um, but that's it for our video for today. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you are a fan of my content, please like and subscribe. I would love to have you part of our little fountain pen um, art family. All right, thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.